はじめまして<笑>よろしくお願いします<笑>えっとごくまにさんすみませんフォローさんGo up. Which I'm sure you've heard probably a couple of. Let's go up. Quarter story? No, just fine. What are you doing? Quarter story? What? Oh, wait. Who has not heard the quarter story? Whoa. Well, then I'll have to fill you in on some Bosch awesomeness. Uh, all right, yeah. We'll have to get through some of that. And uh, it, the way it's set up, unfortunately, today there was not like an actual like autograph like a thing where I can do autographs for you guys, but there's the JoJo thing, which is 7.30 to 9. 
And uh, we can do more autographs there, but it might just be JoJo stuff. But they're giving people JoJo stuff, right? Yeah. For free? Um, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and hopefully taking pictures there too, right? Okay, we don't really know, but maybe in the last five minutes, if you guys have your cameras ready, you want to just run through in a big line and just selfie real fast as you move by. We can do that. Uh, we'll try to do that. All right, yes, question. All right, uh, just to kind of break through some questions. Um, Several years ago, um, you came to KawaiiCon in Hawaii, and you met with your uh, Japanese counterpart, Richio. So I was wondering, you know, after you met with them, did that, you know, change any way how you continue with the rest of the series? You know, did you know, did it change how you might have thought, you know, or you know what I mean? Like when you were continuing to record for the voiceover? No. <laughs> <laughs> I met him, and uh, we fought a little. Uh, we bought car, you know, and, uh, and uh, it seemed to just even out. Uh, it's strange. No, uh, he's a great guy, and uh, something he said, he was like, "You're just like me," and I was like, "Oh, okay, good. You're just like me, but Japanese." Uh, and uh, he, he was cool. Actually, I was just sitting in the back, and he was like throwing imaginary baseballs, uh, and then I started going like this and missing. Um, but, uh, yeah, no, I, I, there wasn't anything that, uh, you know, he, he didn't give me any secret tips on what he did or anything like that. He, he actually said that he thought I did a good job, which is, is really nice to hear. Uh, but thanks for the question. No problem. Hi. Hi there. I actually have two quick questions. Two questions? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> uh, first one is, what do you think of cats? What do I think of cats? <laughs> I think cats are sometimes cool. It depends on the cat, all right? Look, okay, let, 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 I like this. Okay, so Artemis, I think you can pet him for a long time, and you're fine. And you'll like it. Luna, I think you pet her, and then after a couple seconds, boom! Oh! Turn on you and bite you and claw you and be like, I'm done. That's what I think. Have you guys had cats do that to you, by the way? Yeah, I'm sorry. You know, you know what I'm talking about. You're like, oh, this cat's playing his tail so friendly. Oh, oh, look at this. Ah! Yeah. Cats are sometimes douchebags. A dog, you can just see right away are you a douchebag or not? The tail's wagging. You're like, oh, you're good to go. Yeah. Really? I had I had one cat when I was younger. Well, I had a bunch of cats actually. My mom just let them have babies all the time, and uh, I, had, I had a ton of cats. We were like the cat house until the weird guys in the back started sacrificing them. And uh, <laughs> true story. <laughs> it ended up in a lot of me beating people up. But uh, anyways, I had this cat. His name was Prince, and he was freaking awesome. And he was my cat, because my mom had like a thousand of them. And then uh, I had Prince, and he just loved me. He was like my cool little cat. And he'd like hang out with me whenever I'm sleeping, and he'd be there. And one day, I came home from school, and he's gone. And I'm like, where is he? And I was like, Mom, what happened to Prince? And she's like, oh, I gave him away. And my friend I was like, what? And she was like, yeah, well, you know, he's a good cat. He's like, you're just saying that. And she was upset, because she was jealous. Of the love that I was getting from him. Like, all the other cats followed her around, like, you know, but Prince was like, whatever, I like this guy. Um, and so she gave him away to somebody who lived far away, and I was so sad for like two weeks. And I was sitting in my room, and it was raining. And then I hear outside my window, and I look, and I open it up, and there he is, like, oh, I'm Prince. He came back, yeah. He was like, Miles away, and found his way home. It was pretty cool. Aww. And your second question. I should have went a lot faster on the first one. I thought the first one would have been quicker. So my second question is. Hey, this is my panel. I can do whatever. <laughs> Uh, for season two? Yeah. I, uh, we haven't started yet. 
Transforming time into uh, superheroes that wear spandex. <laughs> and their powers? Well, it's mostly just sparks and stuff when they fight. <laughs> and they can flip really high. And the other cool thing? They control robots. Giant ones. <laughs> those are called swords. And they come together and form full tr I mean, uh, <laughs> Then they fight like giant cockroaches. Yeah. And it's really amazing. And I was always the crotch of that. <laughs> uh, 
But anyways, in the first movie, I, we all lost our powers and we had to search our, for our inner spirit animal. And uh, my inner spirit animal was a frog. Which is not, not as cool as the falcon. Because the falcon was the winged lord of the sky. Um, so anyways, yeah, and then uh, the next movie I got a minivan. <laughs> I did get kissed. You know, I actually added that line. The whole, whole me being bummed out, that whole sequence. Originally, she just goes through and you, Adam, you're the frog. You're quick. Uh, Tommy, you're the falcon, the wind lord of the sky. Uh, but then I was bummed and bitter about some other issue. Because some other ranger complained and got all of the cool stuff from me. And the original script was Black Ranger does all these really awesome things. Next script, not so many things because they were given to another person. And I was like, oh, that stinks. And so I was bitter and upset. And I was bummed when that scene came along. And I asked the director, I was like, hey, can I be bummed about getting the frog? Because it's really a lame animal with all the animals. He was like, well, let's do it like the script first, and then we'll try it your way. And so we got to try it my way. And he's like, oh, that's pretty good. Okay, let's adjust it a little bit. So they messed with it, and that's what we ended up with. And then the second movie, when we lose our powers, even this little kid gets a monster truck. Yeah. So uh, our leader gets a Race car! Everybody gets cool cars. Except me. I get a green minivan. I think it swam once in the It was in the water, yeah. But then I was like, you know, I went to the producers, I was like, hey, remember when I was bummed about being a frog? You know, right? I was like, can I, can I do the same thing here? You know? I could be like, oh man, I got a green minivan? Come on, first the frog, now this? I can have a family! He's like, Johnny, Johnny, listen, you are not funny. That's exactly what I was told. And I was like, oh. Well, I think all the laughter has proved them wrong, so. They're laughing at me. With you. You know, we are mostly at you, but with you. Anyway, thank you. Yeah, okay. sit down. Hello. So while we're on the subject of Power Rangers, what can you tell us about The Order? Nothing. <laughs> oh, nothing. I can tell you that it's out of order. Oh, really? I'm just uh, actually, I've only worked on the spec sheet. Uh, I, I co-produced that with Karen. And, uh, and then, so all that stuff I did with uh, David Wall, who's the director, who's actually Blue Ranger stunt guy in the movies and the show. And, uh, Lately, there's been some issues that they've been dealing with as far as SAG kind of really getting down on them and making it very hard for them to shoot. And so I think they're trying to work those issues out. So I don't know a whole lot, unfortunately. Thank you, though. Uh, two questions, is that okay? No. Okay, uh, first, uh, uh, what, what's your take on the new Power Rangers movie? Oh. I haven't seen it. But, okay, but from the trailers? Why, did you just think that I would go see it? <laughs> I'm not in it. If I was in it, I would go see it. Or if they bought my ticket, or invited me to the premiere. I know, I just don't get invited to those things anymore. That was so late. I know. I think they're trying to... What? I heard they invited a bunch of the other original I know. I think everybody except me was invited. Oh, yeah, he's a frog. He's a crutch of the Megazord. Okay, so next up. You were... Vanished in Trigun, yes. and in Trigun Badlands Rumble. Yes. Uh, and Trigun's an old, old series, and Badlands yes. Rumble came out a long time after that was over. Uh -huh. uh, did you ever expect to be called back in for that role? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, I didn't know there was a new, I didn't really know there was a new movie. I heard stories of a movie, and uh, I just thought it was lies. You know, like a lot of things online, and uh, and then yeah, as soon as you know, as soon as they had it, you know, Funimation, they you know called us up and tried to work out and make arrangements for us to be able to work on it. That's yeah. really nice. Thank you. And it was fun too. It was a lot of fun. 
Um, all right. All right, so you guys, there's a lot of people in line. Uh, so I'll try to get through you guys a bit faster. Because some, pe some people want to hear some random stories. They just want to hear what it's like yeah. in, in this Johnny Akbosh's life. <laughs> and all the wonderful things and amazing things that I do in real life. No, actually, when, when you leave this, you'll be like, wow, Johnny is stupid. <laughs> so maybe this is better. Go for it. What's your question? All right, I got a, I got a question and a half. Uh, all right. All right, so the first one, uh, Dog Hack GU, anything about it? Is it memorable to you? Did you like being cooped? Did you have any funny stories from doing it? Did you like it? Just anything about Dog Hack GU. Yeah, I hated it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I enjoyed it. I did. I had a lot of fun. Um, I was, uh, but I don't recall a whole lot because it was a long time ago. And it was at the same time that I was working on Tales. So I was, you know, Coon, who's kind of a womanizer, you know. And then I was Guy, who was like the opposite, afraid of women. And so at the same time, at the same studio. So it was always like, who am I today? Oh, yeah. That's good. So, but I don't really have any stories that I can recall, unfortunately. Sorry. It's all good. Oh, wait, no, I do. <laughs> I do remember a story. Let's hear it, let's hear it. Oh, man, all right. Gosh, how do I tell this story? It's complicated, guys. All right, so. We believe. I get a phone call from another voice actor. And then he's like, hey, are you okay? I'm like, what are you, what are you talking about? I'm fine. Like, yeah, well, you and Yuri, you had a big falling out. I was like, what? What are you falling out? He's like, oh, I guess you haven't seen it then. I was like, seen what? And then he sends me this uh, link to this forum. And, uh, <laughs> and so I'm like, okay. And so I go through it and I'm like reading and it's about, you know, whatever people talking about dot hack or something. He goes, dot hack, yeah. And, it was, uh, and then got down to uh, this guy and he's like, comes up with this story, right? And this story is like, Johnny Young Bosch is whatever, an a-hole douchebag or whatever. Uh, he was working on Dot Hack and the director wanted him to do something and he stopped the director and said, do you know who I am? I'm Johnny Young Bosch. And then Yuri sitting across from him and was like, hey man, chill out. And then Johnny was like, oh yeah, what are you gonna do about it? And then so Yuri knocked Johnny out. <laughs> That's the story, that was on this thing. And I was like, whoa. <laughs> And so I hear it, I was like, hey, did you know that you knocked me out? <laughs> and he's like, oh, yeah, yeah really cool. <laughs> and uh, first off, Dot Hack is a game, right? And in the games, <coughs> we don't work together. We're in the booth by ourselves. You know, so this guy just had this big story. It was just baloney, you know, about me being a total douchebag. And then underneath that, following comments of people like, oh, I knew it. I knew he was a jerk. <laughs> it's like, oh, I hate that guy now, you know? And it's like, wow, people are believing this story, which is just outrageous. You know, it's not how we work in that industry or in that game, especially. Um, and so anyways, I was just frustrated by it and I wanted to kill the guy. Um, so I called up some friends. I got, I got friends, guys. And these, these friends tracked this person down. Their address, phone number, where they worked, which was a GameStop. Uh, and uh, so their, uh, their avatar, I can't remember what their avatar was, but their name on the uh, blog was Lucif. Kind of like Lucifer, but Lucif uh, without the er. And then, uh, so, so I sent like this kind of a cease and desist, you know? And then uh, let him know that my attorneys will be contacting him if he doesn't take care of it or whatever. Um, and then, so he retracted and apologized for making it, and trying to, you know, making up the story. But of course, at that point, the thread was like locked or whatever they call it. And uh, and then, you know, he writes back and he's like, oh, I'm really sorry, you know, I didn't really, you know, have control of myself. I, I, Lucif is one of my split personalities. <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh, well, and I remember writing back, well, you better put Lucif in a bag because <laughs> that fool's gonna get you killed. Uh, and he's like, I'm actually a really big fan of yours. I love you at Trigun. So that's my story about Don <laughs> Hack. <laughs> I didn't have to hunt him down and kill him, I just let him know I knew exactly where he was. <laughs> Where he worked. 
That's about it. Thank you. You're um, welcome. And you had a half. I did. So uh, the line got cut yesterday for your autographs, and unfortunately for the JoJo's one, I'm running panels when that happens. I'm a huge fan of yours. I was wondering if I could get a quick selfie with you. Are you going to be here the whole time at this panel? Yeah, I'm okay. running. Oh wait, this right. panel? This yeah. one right here? Right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So at the towards the end of this panel, like I said, when you were paying attention. Uh, oh. Come in, and we're gonna do quick selfies all the way through. So everybody, come through and get selfies right before you leave. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Does that work? All right, cool. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Sure. Woo! Now, if you're talking about stuff, that means you can take a picture and whatnot. So hopefully, we can get that done before we get out of here. Um, okay. Hi there. Hi there. I have two questions, if that's okay. Well, I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> okay. First question is. Out of all your voice acting roles, what has been your most challenging one to do? Most challenging mm -hmm. role yeah. was Goblin number 13. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I think it was 13, it was a number. Um, but it was a game. I got called up, I was like, hey, Johnny, uh, we got this video game, why don't you come in and do Miss Lingus character? I was like, oh, sure, okay. So I came in the next day. It was like, Goblin number 13 or whatever. So. I saw this uh, script over there. I was like, oh, I'm going to go look and see what's going on. And I see Goblin number 13, but all the dialogue underneath is like, O A E E I A. I'm like, what is this? A typo? I'm like, hey, uh, what's going on with this script? It's all like vowels. And I'm like, oh, you know, just, just you know, like, like Goblin noises. You know, Goblin noises. <laughs> goblin? I was like, I don't know any goblins. You know, I don't know any, like, I don't understand this. He's like, hey, you know, just make up some goblin noises. And I was like, uh, and I had this guinea pig when I was little, you know, and used to talk, <laughs> oh, talk no. to it a lot in my loneliness. And uh, he talked back too. And, uh, and so I was like, uh, he's like, yeah, yeah, do that. And so in the booth, you're on fire. Yeah. <laughs> You're falling off a cliff! <laughs> falling off a cliff on the spikes! <laughs> so for four hours I'm doing that. And then I lose my voice. At the end of the session I'm talking like this. Thank you guys. Thanks for the session. And then uh, next day I had this, this uh, series I was supposed to start. Young kid voice. I was supposed to talk like this. But I couldn't because I was like this. And I walked in and I'm like, hey. Is this gonna work for this character? <laughs> and, uh, nope. Uh, we have to recast. Sorry. So I lost like a whole job. So that was my most challenging uh, role. Was a uh, goblin. I don't even know what the game was. They didn't even tell me. It wasn't like a like, title. And it was like a Namco game or something like that. It was top secret. But so if you play if you play games and you hear some goblin going, Rrr! you know that's you be like it's giant. <laughs> Did you know he lost a job? <laughs> okay, question number two. Um, what has been your most memorable moment from being in the Persona fan franchise? What has been my most memorable moment? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was really trying to hold that for like a minute, but <laughs> let's see. Uh, gosh. I don't know. I think uh, talking to myself, maybe, as a Dachi in Narukami, um, <laughs> towards the end, uh, I was really kind of scared, for the animation especially, uh, like what it was going to sound like, you know. Uh, and then, you know, but I was pretty happy with it, you know, uh, towards the end of that uh, animation. Uh, but uh, yeah, that would be my answer to that, if you like that. Hello. Hello. <laughs> you did it first. <laughs> hey, back and forth. Back you didn't forth. have to make it bigger. <laughs> you, I, you did this, and I did this, and you went like that. <laughs> now what am I going to do? I win. I win. You win. Um, first off, I just want to thank you for voicing like all of my favorite characters. You're welcome. Like, you're, you're, 
three cups in here. So, yeah, um, thanks, thanks for uh, watching. I'm also uh, very curious about that sacrificing cat story you mentioned earlier. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. <laughs> I shouldn't go into that story. I really shouldn't. <laughs> if you don't want to, you don't have to. Let me just tell you this. We have like a ton of cats. And there are these uh, Satan worshiper dudes uh, that were across the alley. And uh, we kept finding our cats back there. Oh. And uh, this is the same guy that when I was in school, uh, he was like, hey, put your name on this. What's your name? Write your name on this piece of paper. And I was like, oh, oh, oh okay. I thought he was trying to be my friend. And I wrote it down and he took it. He's like, my brother is going to make the devil see you at night. And I was like, what? <laughs> And this is also a guy that took one of my cats while I was training in the backyard with my friend and was like, Wah! and threw it. That's terrible. Yeah, so that's why I beat him up. <laughs> and my friend, uh, Casey, my friend Casey, pooped on his car. <laughs> Good times. Yeah. Hey, you know, the old Saint Worshippers. <laughs> You're a little crazy. Just, just a little bit. Yeah. All right. So, did you? A, that's not the only question. You have two questions. Okay. Like everyone else. <laughs> uh, just about, what's like some of your biggest musical influences for your, your band and stuff? <laughs> so I was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I guess I'm the only other one who wants to know that one. Uh, so, <laughs> man, there's a lot. You know, I don't know. I think uh, I listen to all sorts of music, um, and uh, a lot of times it's it's anything that kind of moves me emotionally or gets me to think about things, you know, or puts me in a I don't know, just kind of just motivates me. You know what I mean? It could be a score. A lot of times it is a score. You know. A lot of times, at least lately, it's like music that has no vocals, you know, or not a lot. Uh, I like instrumental stuff, uh, but all across the board. I mean, even like from the Beatles to whatever, you know, Foo Fighters. Uh, Polo would probably say Foo Fighters, Nirvana. You're rolling. Yes, I am. Where's and I got it. I don't know where it's going, but I got a two-part question for you, if that's all right. April Fools? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I do have a two-part question, though. Really? Yeah. Yes, I know. Yes. So. You know what? <laughs> Go ahead. Okay. April Fools. Oh. Yeah. oh. It's tricky on April Fools. It is. You don't know what's real. Exactly. Um, but first, I want to say thank you. You are one of the best voice actors of all time. I don't care what anyone else says. You are one of the greatest. I appreciate that. I tried my best. Hang on a second. Oh, booger. All right, now. This guy's filming. Yeah. What would you say is the... Um, the number one series, in your opinion, that you've been a part of, that would you say is the most underrated out of all of them? Most underrated, Wolf's Ring. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Definitely Wolf's Ring. That show yes. is so awesome. Absolutely. The score, the music is amazing. Um, the voice acting, wow. <laughs> uh, especially the keyboard. Yes. <laughs> but, uh, no, it's really good. You know, um, and. Uh, it's just one of those that really didn't get a lot of uh, mm -hmm. press. They didn't market it that well, I don't think. Mm -hmm. There weren't a lot of toys and things, you know. It was earlier on. Yep. Um, and so, yeah, it was, I think that's one that people should try to check out. Definitely, because that, that is my all-time favorite series, so thank you for that. Yeah, sure. Um, and the second question is, like, out of all the characters that you've voiced, like, who would you say you can compare yourself to the most as far as, like, um, being the closest to, like, in terms of just the character itself? Uh, anime? Yeah, anything. An uh, anything? Yeah. Nero would be the closest to me. Mm. Uh, Ichigo is fairly close to me. Uh, 
But every character has like a portion of me. Like Makoto is like the nice me, you know, the nice friendly, you know, uh, older brother me. You know, that's that's you know. And so each one, you know, his eyes the douchebag me. So yeah, Rienosuke is like a serial killer me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can edit that out. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, you know, every character has a little bit of me, obviously, but uh, but I guess Ichigo or Nero would be closest. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm going to run out of time, so I better tell a story. <laughs> the Quarter Story! <laughs> Thank you. Stand up to this one. And then you can, you can answer, you know, ask, you can answer a question, too, if you want. <laughs> so you guys might maybe want to have a seat. In line. We should probably cap the line, by the way. No more getting in line, please. Because right, I don't think we'll have time for a photo. So, Alright. So, as I can tell you the quarter story, and then we're going to go through yours as fast as we can. Um, yes and no only. Um, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Alright, so. Quarter story. This is a true story. Um, take the freeway to, uh, too bad you can't play music, huh? <laughs> yeah, there's kids in here, dude. That means something else in Japanese. <laughs> so, but don't, don't play it because it's going to be annoying music, I'm sure. It's going to be like EDU. <laughs> Alright, so uh, I take the freeway to get to work, I take the freeway to get home, I exit the off ramp. There's a signal light. There's always a homeless guy on the corner, and I always ignore him because I'm like strapped in my car with a seatbelt. I feel like Rob me, stab me, I don't know, I'm stuck. <coughs> so it's, <coughs> excuse me, uncomfortable for me, I feel it. And so anyways, this one day, I exit the off ramp, and uh, there's four or five cars in front of me. So like from here to the middle of the room, four or five cars in front of me, and it's a red light, and a monster truck pulls up behind me, and it's just tires, you know, over my car. It's a tinted window, and I just feel the engine, because the person in there is just revving, you know, <laughs> You know, just shaking the earth, and I'm like panicking. And in my mind, I see the light turn green, and he's like, Who wants to run us? And he runs us all over. And so I've got that weird image in my head, and I'm like, All right, as soon as this turns green, we better go, because this guy is revving, you know. And I have this, uh, this Ziploc bag full of carrots left over from lunch, and scarfing them down like I'm at a supper. <coughs> and I look over this corner where I've always seen the homeless guy that I ignore on the corner. I look up, expect to see another homeless guy, and I see a homeless woman. And my heart went out to her. It's like, oh man, I could be like my mom out here, you know? It's like, I gotta do something. Right? In LA, you have to pay for parking everywhere. So my cup holders are full of quarters, okay? And I'm like, dude, I just finished this. These carrots, I've got an empty Ziploc bag. So I scooped up all these quarters, and I put it in the Ziploc bag. And I'm like, it's three pounds worth of quarters. You know, this is great, she's gonna change her life. <laughs> Good job, Julie. And then I rolled out of my window, and I put my hand out like this. You know, and I haven't done this before, so I don't really know how it works, but I go like this, you know. And I see her, and she has her sign, and she sees me, and she goes like this. Like, what? Now, aren't you gonna come get him? I'm like, thinking, am I supposed to get out? I haven't done this, I don't know what I'm supposed to do, you know? And I'm starting to freak out, because I don't know, I can't throw this far, you know, what I can't do, like, what? You know, and then uh, the light turns green. And these cars in front of me must have felt the revving engine of this monster truck, because they took Oh off. my God. So me, instinctively, did the same thing. And so I'm going, and I look down, and I'm like, 20 miles an hour, three pound bag of quarters. <laughs> The monster truck is right on my tail, so I can't hit the brakes or he really will run me over. And I'm thinking, I don't know how this exchange is going to happen. He just throw it in her gut like a football player. You know? What if she hangs on to it too long and I pull her into my car and kill her? What if I hang on to it too long and you get yanked out and I die? Like freaking out. In a panic. I'm like, Johnny, you're a martial artist. <laughs> and have vision. All you have to do is calculate, you know? So I have this moment of clarity, this epiphany, I'm like, Johnny, three pound bag of quarters, 20 miles an hour. All you have to do is this. 
and watch it gracefully land into her hand. So there I am going 20 miles an hour, waiting for the right moment, calculating, like Asians do. And I go, yes. And I release. And I say this all the time when I tell the story now. But I think God went like this. Oh, let me say this first. Has anybody been in an accident, car accident or anything, and time slowed down? So this is what I think. God hits the slow up your butt. He's like, oh, Jesus, Moses, get some popcorn nachos. I put this one in slow motion. This one's gonna be good. Yeah, okay. Oh, well, let me record it. Hang on. So it's recorded. Well, let's play it back. Let's play it back uh, when he's dead a lot. So there I am. I release and I watch as this three pound bag of quarters flies through the air, 20 miles an hour. Slow motion. 20 miles an hour. Three pound bag of quarters. 20 miles an hour. Smacks her in the face. The bag rips open. Quarters fall, glistening in the sunlight as she's going down. I'm driving past her, and the only thing I can do is this. No! Go. Hello people. Hello again. No. Uh, Next word. No. Go for it. Quick. 
Um, regarding the Rangers, um, yeah. one of the, the original series, I've always been wondering, how did the scheduling work for the English portion of the show? In, in regards to shooting your, the English portion of the show with the actors. How did the scheduling work? It was like we did showed you, up for the morning. shoot everything all at once? Like, was it shot all at once? Or? Oh, no, we shot like three episodes a week. Yeah, so basically we'd get like, I don't know, three or four scripts. Um, and then during that week or that week and a half, we would just be working on that. Like if it's a command center, we go in there and do the first episode and then switch to the second episode, change our clothes, you know, so change our clothes again in the third episode. And then they throw it all together and edit it in the you know, stock footage from Japan. Yeah. yeah. All right. Hey, hey. How you doing? Good. <laughs> of all the seasons of Power Rangers, which one was like your favorite? Oh, that like you did. Um, what was I going to say? Anything else but what I did. Oh, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, you know, I had the most fun towards the end. Zeo was a lot of fun, but I had fun during Turbo until they got rid of us. Um, but, you know, I got to say, my Mighty Morphin was also a lot of fun because it was the first time I got to do any of that stuff, you know. Even though I was a background ranger. But, uh, yeah, it was fun. Yeah. Can you do the real quick? Do what? Oh, 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 he, 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 oh, he. No, I mean, I was, I was like, this guy is conniving and manipulating, and I'm glad I am. <laughs> <laughs> he was the one character. I auditioned for a couple characters, and he was one of them. And I remember thinking, I want to play this guy, because he just seems fun to play. And I think he looks cool, too, with his jacket. You know? Um, and, uh, yeah, I just enjoy that kind of douchebaggery. Also, the fact he's able to pull off the tank with nothing but a knife in his way. Right? Yeah, I want to see more of him. I want to see more da 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 And uh, I want to see more of him and like his history. Yeah, I think it'd be cool. Alright, thank you. Yeah, no problem. Alright, uh, unfortunately, I think we have time for maybe three more questions. Sorry, guys. And in order for us to do it, who wants to do the selfie thing? So yeah, so I think only three more questions, and then uh, we'll have you guys maybe line up this way, and then get your cameras ready for selfie mode, and snap them as you go by, and uh, it'll be totally random and weird, but you know, maybe we can make that work. Hey, uh, my question has to do with the uh, legendary core of Power Rangers. Huh? Were you ever offered to uh, have them, or is I, it just like the... Yeah. I wasn't offered them. Oh, you weren't offered them. Look That's at all these people. Movie. Yeah, and just like the movie, I wasn't the past to come back. I'm not even going to try. Hi. <coughs> it's ma'am. So, I'm going to ask a question about the Go for it. Um, yeah. So, <laughs> I know Ichigo screams a lot during battle. Have you ever lost your voice while um, voice acting Ichigo? How many times? So how many times? Um, there's... You know, I don't, I'm trying to think about the loss of my voice. I'm not sure if I've lost it, but I've certainly burned down a little bit. Uh, but earlier on, you know, when he's going into the Soul Reaper and training and all that stuff, and he's all that screaming. That's yeah. it. Because in that time when I did a lot, you know, it was, it was a bit rough. Or even the full hop, it was a bit of screaming. But uh, I don't remember. I, I mean, I must have at some point lost my voice, but I haven't told you that I'm going to be sure. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. And the last question I was wondering, which uh, R1 and R2 company is your favorite? And uh, what's that? And could you first name the Delusion? Okay. Um, it's hard because I like them both. Uh, but I think I would choose two just because I really enjoyed the ending. You know, his final speech and all that. Um, let's see. Uh, Lelouch saying something? Anything? I love Lucy be with Tanya command you to dance. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't say that. Oh, I like that. 
All right. So uh, thank you guys for coming. If you get your phones ready um, and just walk by and snap it real quick, then hopefully, because I want to be able to get everyone who's in here who wants one. Okay, guys. So please don't take up extra time with additional questions or video or whatever outside. Thank you guys. Thanks for coming. All right, and that's that. <laughs>